This is going to be a completely free course on how you can use ChatGPT. And I can guarantee you, if you watch this video from start to finish, you'll be able to come out of this becoming an expert ChatGPT user. In today's video, we're gonna go over the 15 different ways that you can use ChatGPT. And I guarantee you that you will be blown away by all the possibilities that you can do here. So before we start, what I recommend you do is not only watch this video, but I want you to actually follow along with me as I go through these things. So that means create an account, type in the prompts, and actually go one by one into what I'm going to explain in this video. This is going to be the best way for you to learn about this stuff because you're going to be instantly applying what I tell you in this video. So now let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do if you want to access ChatGPT is go to this website called chat.openai.com. Now when you open that up, you're going to go ahead and see this screen. And the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and sign up. And now it's pretty easy to sign up. ChatGPT makes it super simple. You can sign up using your email address or you can use your Google account or even your Microsoft and your Apple ID account. Whichever ones you prefer makes it very easy for you to log back in again. Now for me here, I already make an account, but if you don't have any account, you can just start by putting your email address on there and then you can click continue. Now, once you go into ChatGPT, you're going to see this dashboard. Now, you might be wondering what are a lot of these things. So starting out on the left side, these are called the chat section. So think about this like when you're creating a Microsoft Word and you want to create a new document. So that's what this is all about. If you click this button right here, you can click new chat, which means that you can create a conversation with the chat GPT AI bot. And that's what really is when it comes to chat GPT. It's really a conversation with an artificial intelligence. Uh, that's what's cool about it. There's nobody on the other side that's answering these questions. These are just purely machines that are answering it to us. And the reason why you want to have new chats is, for example, if you want to keep a certain conversation just on a specific topic, you can do that and say that tomorrow or the next day that you want to come back to that one conversation, you have the ability, you have the ability to access those questions back again and those conversations. Now, when you go on the bottom here, you can actually see that there is, you can add a team workspace. That's one of the new things that OpenAI has done this year. You can actually collaborate on a team member. So per se that if you have a team, uh, you can add them into your account. That way they also have access to those chats and those conversations. Now on the top left here, when you see ChatGPT 3.5, uh, that's the type of GPT, which is the model that you currently are using. Now, as you see here, there's GPT-4 and I do have the premium feature that costs about $20 per month. And for this sake of the video, we don't really need ChatGPT-4. We can do everything that we're going to talk about today on the regular ChatGPT 3.5. And really, that's kind of all you need when it comes to using this artificial intelligence. The next section that I wanted to go over with you here is actually the middle here or the lower bottom. Uh, it has a couple of different suggested prompts. And that's really how we're going to talk about with this AI. When you see this message ChatGPT, now in this text box, that's when you'll be able to ask it anything that you want to ask it. That's going to be the text box that you're going to be inputting and it's going to be your input into this AI bot. If you per se like don't really know what you're doing, you can go ahead and choose one of these prompts, but you're in this video and you're going to be known a lot of great things when it comes to using ChatGPT. Now, the first use case that we're going to use ChatGPT for is to search for data. Now, in this video, we're going to go from the very beginner level to a little bit more the advanced at the very end. It's going to come across as very easy and the difficulty will go, uh, it will go higher and higher over time. And when it comes to searching for data, this is probably one of the simplest things that you can do in ChatGPT. So, for example, if I want to go ahead and ask it a question, for example, who is the founder of Google? It will then come up with an answer. And for this case scenario, Google was founded by Larry Page and Sergey Brin while they are PhD students at Stanford University. And they started Google as a research project in 1996 and blah, blah, blah. Now, keep in mind that the information that you're asking ChatGPT 3.5, uh, the latest updated information is going to be in January 2022. So if you were to ask, for example, what is the movies that are currently out? 
you won't get the most recent answers and ChatGPT actually will tell you uh, my last update is in January 20, 2022 and they don't have access to real-time data. So just FYI, this is something that you got to keep in mind of when you're using ChatGPT, but you can ask it a lot of other questions. For example, where is the headquarters of Apple? And it will give you the answer of, as of the last update, the headquarters of Apple is located at one Apple Park, Cupertino, United States. So as you know, the this is probably one of the boring uses of ChatGPT. It's kind of like a Google search feature, but instead of going through different blogs and different articles after your search, it's in a conversation like matter. It's just like talking to another person and when you ask it certain questions, it'll give you certain answers based on what you ask it. The second thing that you can do in ChatGPT is asking for suggestions. Now, for example, I love self-development and I want to know, give me the 10 books for self-development. So what I can do here is go through the prompt section and ask it, recommend me 10 books for personal development. So it will then give you this list of 10 books of personal development. So things like the habits of the seven habits of highly effective people, atomic habits, mindset, the new psychology, the power of now. So all of these books are their recommendations based on what I give it, which is personal development. Now, if I want to ask it to redo the search one more time, I actually can click this button that's called regenerate on the bottom. And when I click that, ChatGPT will regenerate a new answer for me based on the same prompt. So for example, as you can see here, now the list is slightly different. It still has some of the same titles like Atomic Habits, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and uh, Mindset and the New Psychology of Success, Emotional Intelligence. So it has some new answers to it. And you can do this unlimited amount of times. It's not going to charge you anything, it's free. And if you see this numbers also in the bottom, you can toggle between the different answers of ChatGPT. So if you wanna go back to their first answer, you can just go back and click this left arrow and it will go back to the first answer that it will give us. So that way you can see which answers that you prefer and go that way. It also have a feature now which can read you the answers aloud. So this is something that's really nice that they just added recently. That way in case you have some sort of uh, if you need more clarity and you need to hear the words being spoken to you, they can actually read it to you. Another thing on the bottom here that you can do is actually copy the whole answer. So if you want the easy way to copy, instead of clicking and dragging the whole thing, you can just click the copy button on the very bottom and you can always paste it somewhere else if you're looking for that as well. And lastly, this little uh, response button here, this little thumbs down, if, for example, that you don't really like any of the answers that ChatGPT provides, you can click that it's a bad response and it will ask it, what kind of response were you expecting? It's kind of more for the company, for OpenAI, to get feedback of how to train the language model so that it will be smarter over time. Now, the next thing that you can do on ChatGPT is actually translations. Now, I'm very fond of languages. I love learning languages. I studied it in college. And if I want to, I can use ChatGPT as kind of like a Google Translate, but on steroids. And the reason why I say this is, for example, on Google Translate, if you're trying to translate something, it will give you the word for word translation of that specific language. Whereas in ChatGPT, it has more of a context and can understand more about what you're trying to say and gives you a better answer depending on that specific context. So for example, I just typed in this prompt that says, I'm currently traveling in Mexico. I'm at my hotel and I want to ask the receptionist, where is the closest beach from this hotel? How do you say this in Spanish? And when I clicked enter, it quickly gave me this translation in literally less than five seconds. And it will give you this answer, which this is definitely the way on how to say uh, that specific translation over there. And if you want to, you can do this with any language. So for example, if I wanted to tell ChatGPT, can you translate this into Mandarin? And it will go ahead and translate it to you in Mandarin, just like that in less than five seconds. 
And because ChatGPT is made so that it looks like a conversation, you can keep asking it questions, a lot of different things, and you can refine the answers depending on what you want out of it. So for example, if I also want to ask, how can you pronounce the Spanish pronunciation? You can go ahead and type in the prompt. Can you give me the pronunciation of the Spanish sentence? And right here, it will give you the word for word pronunciation of the words that we just translated. So it's really cool stuff and you can use it literally to do any languages and maybe to speak to your relatives or your friends in different countries, really cool things that you can do here. The next thing that you can do with ChatGPT is for comparisons. Now, if you have two different things that you wanted to compare, you can also ask ChatGPT to give you kind of like the comparison between the two decisions. So for example, I can type in something like, what is the difference between vegan diet and pescatarian diet? So it will give me the answers like this. The vegan diet excludes all animal products, including meat, poultry, fish, dairy, and eggs. And pescatarian diet allows for the consumption of fish and seafood. And let's say that I want more out of this. I can just ask it, give me more information about the two options. And it will go ahead and literally tell you a more in-depth version of that comparison. Now, let's just say currently it has the foods that it's included, uh, foods that it's excluded, health benefits, and all that different stuff. Now, let's just say like I wanted to make it simpler. Make this simpler and less than 200 words, and I want to be able to explain it to a fifth grader. There you go. And now it just pulled that up in less than five seconds. Vegan diet, eat fruits, veggies, grains, nuts, seeds, avoid meat, fish, eggs, dairy. Why? Helps animals, environment, and keeps you healthy. And pescatarian, eat like a vegan plus fish and seafood. I actually love this answer. This is so funny. Um, why? Still helps animals and the planet, but lets you eat fish for extra nutrients. There you go. So uh, you can actually uh, do a lot of cool stuff with this. Now, the next thing that you can do with ChatGPT is creative writing. Now, this is probably one of the most used feature of ChatGPT. I use this a lot in my regular life, in my work. I use this all the time. And it can be anything from writing stories, children's novels, email templates, email responses, SMS and text messages, or even scripts, poems, short stories, songs, all these different things ChatGPT can do for you. What I have done here is wrote a prompt for ChatGPT and it says, write a children's story about a penguin that got lost from the herd and he has to make his way back to Antarctica from Hawaii. Talk about the journey that the penguin have to go through and make this story fun with the lesson of never giving up. This story will be told to a group of third graders. Now, feel free to pause if you want to read this whole story. And just for beginners, it tells you, first of all, a title, which is Percy's Polar Adventure. And let's read the first paragraph of this story. Once upon a time in the icy land of Antarctica, there lived a young penguin named Percy. Percy was curious, a little penguin who loved exploring new places. One sunny day, while playing with his penguin friends near the icy shore, Percy wandered off to chase a shiny fish. He chased and chased until he realized he couldn't see his penguin herd anymore. It even gives you the dialogue of the characters and it builds into the story. It even talks about, but the journey wasn't easy. Percy faced big waves, strong winds that pushed him off course. Sometimes he felt like giving up and just to stay warm, sunny ocean forever. Again, this is what we told it. We wanted to have the lessons of never giving up. So it even gives a little bit of a conversation here, a little dialogue. And this is a whole children's story written in less than 15 seconds by ChatGPT. And let's just say you want to make this story much shorter. You can say, make this story less than 200 words. Now the story is less than 200 words. And let's just say that you want to make this into a poem. You can tell ChatGPT to make this into a poem. There you go. So now you can pause and read this poem here. But for example, in Antarctica's icy domain, Percy the penguin lost his way, chasing fish with curious glee. 
he found himself in Hawaii's Bay. So again, it even have like the little rhyme in there. Uh, you can even make this a song. So if you want to turn it into a song, you can type in, make this into a children's song. It'll give you the verse, the chorus, and all the different stuff to make it into a song. Again, a lot of possibilities here. So let's say that you wanted to use this feature for work. And one of the prompts that you can do, for example, is I just typed in, I work as a marketing director for three years in this company. I want you to write an email to my boss to ask for a raise in a confident and kind manner. And just like that, ChatGPT just gave me a whole email with a whole subject. So if you, so we can read this, say the subject is request for salary review and discussion. I hope this email finds you well. As I approach my third year with this company, I wanted to take a moment to express my gratitude for the opportunities and support I've received since joining the team. Over the three past years, I've dedicated myself wholeheartedly to my role as a marketing director. And as I reflect on my time, the responsibility taken on, I believe it's possibility of a salary review. There you go. So I just wrote an email that I would send to my boss of trying to get a raise. Now, let's just say you want to make this email sound more casual. I can just tell it, make this email sound more casual. So again, you can make it as casual as you want it to be. It is still technology, so whatever output that it will give you will all depends on your input. But as you can see here, they do a really good job on giving the output, make it very easy for you, and pretty much is a pretty good copy. The next feature that we're gonna talk about on how you can use ChatGPT is for brainstorming. Now, ChatGPT, as you see, is super smart. It can be your marketer, it can be your writer, it can be a mathematician, it can even be a coder. So ChatGPT is a great partner for you to brainstorm some ideas. Now, personally, I've used this myself too for many of my businesses and for other people as well as kind of like a favor to them. So let's just say that I am currently planning a vacation and I wanted to ask ChatGPT about things that I can do within this vacation. So I can type in a prompt like this one. I'm planning a vacation with my family. My mother likes to eat a lot of good food and my dad likes to play golf. My sister and I like to go to amusement parks or do fun outdoor activities. Can you give us five different places that we can go to? So as you can see here, ChatGPT just gave me recommendations or places to go to and the reason why we would like that spot. So for example, Orlando, Florida, your sister and you can enjoy various amusement parks like Disney World, Universal Studios, and SeaWorld. Your mother can indulge in a wide array of culinary experiences from fine dining to local eatery. Your dad can play golf at world-class tournaments and courses in the area such as Bay Hill Club, Lodge, and all these different stuff. And it'll even give you other options as well, kind of like what I told it. And what's cool about this is now you can continue this conversation. So now let's just say that I want to expand on this. And I want to choose number five to go to Tokyo, Japan. I can ask it, can you create us a five-day itinerary to visit Tokyo, Japan? And you can even specifically make it so that it will have a guardrail against it. So what I mean by that is I can ask it without spending more than $7,000. And now, as you can see, ChatGPT just created a five-day itinerary for our family to go to Tokyo, Japan with a budget of less than $7,000. And it gives you day one, this is what you can do in the morning, arrive in Tokyo and check in for your accommodation. Evening, this is what you need to do. Again, if you were to search this on Google, it'll probably take you a while to come up with this plan, right? That just popped up on my computer in less than 15 seconds. And that's why ChatGPT, I think, is so much better than Google search. And I think it's going to be the new Google search is just going through the data on ChatGPT. So the next feature that I want to tell you about ChatGPT for this video is summarizing a text into bullet points. So let's just say one of your friends sent you an article or a book that's way too long and you don't really feel like reading it. ChatGPT can summarize it for you and tell you the most important parts about that specific article. So what I have done here is created this prompt. That's basically say, I want you to summarize this article into five key points that I need to know. And so I just copied and pasted this article from Apple's website, and I'm going to paste it here and just click enter. And just like that, I got five different things that I need to know about this whole article. 
probably it will take me like around five minutes to read the article, maybe even 10. But now ChatGPT just read through the whole thing and summarized it for me. So basically Apple just talked about how it has introduced the new 13 and 15 inch MacBook Air and talks about the performance of the M3 chip. And I think this read would take me like less than a minute to read or maybe even 30 seconds. Definitely one of the most useful features when it comes to saving your time. The next feature that I want to talk to you about when it comes to ChatGPT is generating lists. Now, you can ask ChatGPT to generate lists that you need to know or some information that you need. For example, if I want to start cooking lasagna for dinner, I can ask ChatGPT what ingredients that I need to cook lasagna. So for example, I can type in a prompt like, I want to cook lasagna, give me the ingredients I need to buy at the store. ChatGPT would then give you all of the ingredients that you need to buy at the store. Now, let's just say that they don't have some tomato paste, like number seven over here. You can tell it they don't have tomato paste. And let's just say ricotta cheese to make it a bit more difficult. And it will give you an alternative or a substitute for those specific ingredients. And let's just say you want to refine this even more. I forgot that my guess is vegan. How do we turn this meal to vegan friendly? And it will give you a lot of different substitutes that I needed to make this meal vegan friendly. Things like using ground beef or Italian sausage, we can replace that into plant-based ground meat or to replace the ricotta cheese with tofu ricotta. So ChatGPT is very smart. It can give you these lists. Or let's just say that you wanted to make a list of workouts that you need to do. You can go ahead and ask ChatGPT and ask it, give me a list of workouts I need to do to burn fat and lose weight. And it will give you the different type of activities and workouts that you can do to burn fat and lose weight. So you can see here, cycling, swimming, jump rope, hit training. Again, super cool stuff here. And ChatGPT is literally changing the game when it comes to this. Uh, before you have to go through Google searches or Facebook posts or blogs for this. And now everything is centralized in this one conversation with this artificial intelligence. The next feature that I wanna tell you about when it comes to ChatGPT is doing pros and cons. Now, let's just say you're deciding that you wanted to do something and you have two options in front of you and you don't really know which one you should choose. So I love traveling. Let's use that as an example here. So I can write something like, I'm debating whether I want to go to Hawaii or Puerto Rico. Give me the pros and cons of each destinations. And now it'll give me some of the pros and cons of each destination. For example, in Hawaii, there's stunning natural beauty, diverse activities from surfing to snorkeling to hiking and whale watching. And the cons is it's expensive and there's crowded tourist spots. And same goes with Puerto Rico. There's rich history and culture as a pro. It also has beautiful beaches. And some of the cons is it has hurricane risk or maybe even a language barrier because they speak Spanish. So again, you can use this to compare and contrast two different things. Let's just say that you want to decide whether you should get a dog or a cat. You can literally ask ChatGPT, give me the pros and cons of owning a cat or a dog. And it will come up with you all the pros and cons for these two animals, which I think is pretty crazy. And how it can do it just this fast is pulling all this information from all the web and giving you all the ones that are relatable to the context. So I think that's why I love ChatGPT a lot because it uses so many different data points to come up with this simple answer, which is really cool. Now, the next use case that you can use for ChatGPT is actually for research and study. So let's just say that you're writing a paper and you wanted to include certain studies about something. Let's just say you're writing a college paper and you wanted to talk about the benefits of wearing sunscreen. So you can write a prompt like, Give me the studies that shows the benefits of wearing sunscreen. And it's even going to give you four different options here and the type of study that's conducted, who conducted it, 
and also a little summary of what that study is about. And for example, if I want to ask it to quote something from that study, I can just ask it, can you pull a quote from the first study you mentioned above? Just like a conversation. Like I want you to imagine that you're just talking to another person where in reality, it's not really another person. It's just kind of like a robot, which is very trippy, but that's how it works. <laughs> and so it's very interesting here. So sometimes it comes back to you. If they can't access that source, it'll give you this message of how uh, they don't have direct access, but it still gives you a little quotations here of what you can use for your text and, or even your writings. So really cool stuff here. The next thing that you can do here for ChatGPT is feedbacks on your text. So let's just say that you have written something and you want ChatGPT to grade that writing. So what I can do is I can type a prompt like this, give me feedback on the tone and language of this website copy. And I just copy the things that are on my website and going to paste it here on ChatGPT. And just like that, ChatGPT just told me the tone that I use. And it says overall, the tone and language of the website copy are engaging and persuasive. So number one, clarity and conciseness. The copy is clear and concise, making it easy for readers to understand. It gives me a really good feedback here on what I wrote, which is really cool. What you can do is also give it another prompt to change that output. So I can say something like, can you rewrite the copy to make it sound more casual? and at a fifth grader reading level. And just like that, it gave me this copy in a very short, very casual fifth grader reading level. Obviously something that I would need to tweak there, but it's a good starting point. You know, I wouldn't copy and paste this and use it right away, but I would at least get my brainstorming session going. And I keep, I can keep asking ChatGPT to give me more examples and maybe it'll get closer to what I really want. So I think they did a pretty decent job over here. The next thing that you can do with ChatGPT is role-playing. And this is honestly one of my favorite features too, when it comes to ChatGPT and how I use it a lot when it comes to my work, when it comes to my personal life here. And so for example, let's just say that you are going to get an interview to work for Apple. And I don't know why I use Apple for a lot of our examples today, but I think it's just easier for us to understand. So I can ask it, you are to act as an interviewer for Apple. I am going to apply as a product manager. Give me the list of questions you would ask me in an initial interview. And then from here, ChatGPT will literally act as if it was an interviewer or an HR person from Apple. So it will tell me the questions like, what attracted you to apply for a product manager position in Apple? How do you prioritize features and enhancements when developing a product roadmap? And so this will allow me to literally practice my interview skills before getting into that phone or getting into that interview, the real one. And I can even ask it, how would you answer question one to five? And it will give you literally an example of how you would answer these questions. So again, ChatGPT can role play as both sides. Like you can tell it to role play as the interviewer or you can tell it to role play as the applicant. And you can use this for so many different things. You can ask it to pretend that they're your boss. You can ask it to pretend that they are your coach. You can ask it to pretend that they are your fitness coach. Whatever that looks like, you can role play with ChatGPT because ChatGPT can take on so many different hats and it's just like another person, again, at the, at the other side of the screen. Another thing that you can do with ChatGPT is explaining hard concepts. So let's just say you're going into a class or you're currently learning about something difficult and you can use it to explain concepts for you. So for example, I can write something like, can you explain to me Newton's first law? So they will tell you right here, an object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion will remain in motion at a constant velocity unless acted up upon by an external force. And it'll give you this little explanation, which is true. And now let's just say, I want this to be explained easier. I can just ask it, explain this to me as if I was a third grader. So as you can see here, I'll actually give you a little story. You can pause and read the whole story. 
but all right, imagine you're playing with your toy car. If you push your toy car gently, it starts moving, right? Now, if you stop pushing it, what happens? It keeps rolling for a bit before it stops. That's because of something called Newton's first law. So it just starts explaining to me like I was a third grader, which is exactly what I'm asking it to do. Uh, you can use it with so many different concepts, coding, mathematics, physics, and they can explain it to you and break it down in this simple manner, which I think is genius. The next thing that you can do with ChatGPT is actually asking ChatGPT for commands. So now we're getting into a little bit of the slightly more intermediate slash advanced level. So what you can do is actually ask ChatGPT to give you more prompts to tell it what to do. So for example, you can write something like this for your prompt. I just wrote the email below and I want to know what types of commands I can ask you regarding editing my email. And then I'm just going to copy and paste my email in the bottom. So as you can see here with ChatGPT, literally it will give you the prompt for us to ask ChatGPT on what to do. If I want to do grammar and spelling check, I can use these prompts like, please check for any grammar or spelling errors in my email, or can you proofread my email for any grammatical mistakes? And for example, if I wanted to re-edit the structure and the flow, I can ask it evaluate the overall structure and flow of my email make sure the content of my email progresses logically from one point to another. So again, ChatGPT literally would tell me what to tell it. It will tell me the commands that I need to do certain stuff. So it's kind of teaching me how to use itself. It's kind of interesting, right? But one of the coolest things that you can do here, and a lot of people forget that you can do this on ChatGPT. Another thing that you can do here in ChatGPT is mentorships. So let's just say I wanted to get an advice from somebody that lived in the past. So going back into the Apple example here, so I can type in something like, I want you to act as Steve Jobs. You are my mentor and I will ask you questions about life and business. And you will give me an answer as if you are Steve Jobs, understood. And once ChatGPT says understood, you can start asking it questions. How can I be a better leader for my team? So imagine if I had to pay for a one-on-one -on -one time with Steve Jobs, which rest, which rest in peace, Steve Jobs, but it just gave me an answer after, as if ChatGPT is Steve Jobs. I can ask it like, what would you do if your company is going bankrupt? I don't know. So as you can see there, that's what Steve Jobs would say, which is kind of crazy to think about it, right? So those are all the things that you can do with ChatGPT at this beginner level. So I want you to think of ChatGPT as a person by your side for 25 seven, and they can be your marketer, they can be your assistant, they can be your friend, they can be your coach, and they can be anything that you want it to be. And the key into being an expert on ChatGPT is by knowing how to prompt the responses. And because ChatGPT is still a technology, it can't read our mind yet. So the better you are at asking the questions, the better answers that you will get. So in order for you to get better answers, you wanna make sure that you're specific in what you're looking for, you give it a lot of feedback because a lot of the times the best answer is not going to happen as the first answer. And just be patient because sometimes the more questions that you ask it, the more knowledge that it will have and the more context that it will have and it will give you a better answer for the next round of prompting. So if this has been helpful to you, make sure you click that like button so that people can also see this video and feel free to share this video to anybody that needs it. And if you don't know, my name is Brandon and make sure you subscribe to my channel so I can do a lot more videos like this. And until then, I will see you in the next video.